Hi guys. Welcome. So we are ahead of schedule. You can watch this on replay with pause options anytime you want to. And we're doing the fine wild daisies today. You can make it your own. You can do some different colors. Okay, so let's talk about supplies really quick. They're always posted in uh, the description on our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham, and on our website. So you just have to maybe scroll a little bit and go to description. I like to start my background with a large brush here. So we're going to be using some soft orangey yellow colors, and then we're going to add in some kind of lime green in the background before we do the darker green for the leaves. Of course, some white, but we, I always use primary colors. So a bright yellow or cadmium, bright red, which is the non-orange kind, although orange kind red in here would be perfect. Um, blue, so phthalo blue and black and white. So you can also use premix colors. I have, um, this is called a cadmium yellow, which I is actually looks orange, but sometimes, you know, colors, they change their names a little bit on what it actually looks like and cadmium orange. So you can use those types of things. You can use um, premix greens as well, some viridian green and some forest green, stuff like that. Okay, so now for my brushes, I got my large one. You can use any large one, any size canvas. You can use a square, you can use something rectangular. And then for other brushes that I have, I have medium, bright, it's about a number four. Uh, for this one, you don't really need to have a flat brush you can use a round brush instead. So for a round brush example, for the petals, you can use something like this. And you can forget about the square brush. You can also have a couple detailed brushes on the side for you know, the details on the stems and on some of the petals that you need to fine tune. All right, so I think we can get started. You can take your time as we paint along. So I'm gonna start with my large brush and I have my water cups and paper towel. And you can just lightly water your canvas if you want to. I had a little bit of paint on there so I'm just getting rid of that. In terms of getting the background started, I'm going to pull some white to the side. And if you have a mixing palette, great white to the side, and we're gonna take a little bit of red and yellow at the same time. So it's like a dot of each. It does get a bit more reddish pink if you take equal parts. So I'm gonna take a nice scoop of yellow. It starts getting more golden yellowy, and I think that's a great color for the orange because it's not overly like orange, dark orange, right? It's more yellowy orange. And we're gonna change that as we go. So let's just test this out and see how it looks. So all I'm doing is I'm just, I like to just initially just dab and kind of blob it in, get the texture going. I don't like to go smooth. And here it's a nice rough textured background. It's not too rough, it's very soft, but it's got a little bit of dabs in there. So that's nice, very light. Um, let's go a little bit darker. Let's add a bit more red, see how that looks. See how it gets more like red orange. So you can start adding this in. I like to do a bit of both of these colors because it's almost like you have an undertone of this while mostly being a light orange on top. See, it kind of mixes well together. So I'm just gonna get this filled in here, get a bit more of that, maybe put in some more in around that light yellowy orange that I've made. And you, the trick is not having too much white because when you put too much white, it actually turns very peachy cream and not staying the orange that you were intending. So if you're going, why is it so creamy? Why is it so like light pink? Um, you just need less white. So you do have a bit of white, but not as much. 
So you just want to take a little bit of white to the side, and then you're going to take a big scoop of yellow. Okay, and it stays more deeper, darker kind of orange too. And just a little touch or two of red. Okay, and you get a nice orange. Let's see how this orange looks. Nice. So that's a very golden yellowy orange. So just have fun with the colors. I'm gonna add a bit more red. Do the same type of thing. Get more of a red, almost coral, right? So you can just get hints of coral in here and it balances some of your orange out. Bit more red. So if you're finding it's not really turning more red, you just take more red on your brush and you can get those little pockets of red. And this is your style. This is something that you can do to your liking. You don't have to be so exact with what you see, make it your own. And if you add a bit more white, it just gets more softer, creamier, if you do really like the creamy look, but I'll let that be up to you. Just adding a little bit by a little bit as I go, see so a bit more red and some just on top of that orange. It's okay if you paint it all really dark because you can always lay over top some lighter colors. Some of those light, yellowy, golden colors right on top. I just take a little bit of white again, mostly yellow. Touch of red, but mostly yellow. And get that yellowy, golden orange. And just right over top, you can just kind of lightly dab And dilute some of those harsh colors that you're not a big fan of. Although I do, I do think it's great. I think it's nice. You know, just kind of dabbing, doing circular motions, letting it be kind of spongy looking. Cool. When it's more dry, you can always go back over top and change some things, add some more texture. And that was just a bit more yellow on my brush. So second coats are a thing. You can, if you want to do a second coat, go for it. It gets more opaque. There. I think this is nice. Yeah. Perfect. I'll just add a little bit more red down here, maybe. Now I'm just going to wash this brush off. Wash it off, dab it dry, and we basically don't need a large brush for a while. You can use it for a bit of some green, which we're going to use more of a lime green at first before we start putting in the dark green. It's just to help map where you want your greenery to be. So you can use see like a yellowy lime green. You can make your own. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to make it. That's just an example there. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna use this one. I'm actually gonna use my medium square and or your round, right? Whatever you prefer, either one of these. So this one, I'm gonna take a little dip in the water. And I think I'm just gonna wait one minute while this kind of settles and dries for a hot minute there. It's nice when it happens when you can have it more dry so you're not spreading paint around. <laughs> Hi Deborah. yes, I'm ahead of schedule. I have things I need to do tonight. So it's the same thing, right? You can paint it later. So I'm just waving my canvas around so that it dries a little bit faster. And if you have a blow dryer, 
Obviously, that will do the trick if you are impatient, kind of like me. With painting, you just want to get it done, right? You just want to keep going. You don't want to have to wait because you're on a roll. And again, we love seeing results. So uh, on our Facebook page, if you go to the support group, so if you go to groups, and go to artist palette support group for acrylic paintings. We love seeing other renditions of what we've created and your version or your style. So any questions that you may have should be fun and relaxing. Okay. This is a bit more dry now. Those fun blotches. Okay. So we're just about to get started on some of the greenery. And then for sure we want the white to be dry. So with my flat medium, I'm going to take some white again. You can go right over top of some of your light orange. Not too much red though, see? And then you're gonna take your blue. This is a lot of blue, by the way. Um, I'm just gonna make a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a big scoop of my yellow. And it just turns very lime kind of green. And I am gonna add a little bit more white. Lime green is what I was going for. So I like to wipe off my brush so it's not too much. If you need to keep changing it, just take some yellow with a small section of what you've already mixed. Don't try to mix it all in a pile because it takes a lot of paint. You don't want to waste your paint. Some more white if you want to get even brighter. So even yellowy, brighter, light green. I did go pretty light, okay? So just wiping this on each side so it stays thin if you're using the flat brush. Okay, so more of that light, lime yellowy green. Touch of water. Okay, so from the bottom, you can see there's lots of greenery coming from the bottom, right? And then it kind of just goes in different directions at the top. I, I think what's best is if you just test it out first and see what you think of the color. You don't want it to be too, too dark, first of all. If you want it to, if you like, if you're kind of like me and you like things a little bit on the muted side, so a little bit more grayish, you can add just the tiniest little dot of black. You have to be careful. See, you can barely see, where is the black? You can't really see it. So there, and look at that. It's already made it gray green. Okay, so let's just go down at the bottom. There's some, you just wanna make sure it's very soft and kind of subtle. So when I do this, you're gonna have that much darker green. It's gonna be just like a little bit of a background layer. It's called, I like to call it a filler. So I just, I don't, I'm not really perfect with this at all. I kind of just kind of, you know, use the thin side, flick it upwards, um, do some tall pieces. Like I have one coming over here. Maybe we have a leaf. It's gonna be coming up this way. And on the side, I know it's hard to see. So on the side, you can just make, I like to flick and just make a rough looking leaf. So it looks like when you put the dark one on top, you have little bits of that light green showing through, showing outside of it, Adds a little bit more dimension, I think. But lots of it from the bottom. And same up here, you can just take the same green and just make a little bit of a leaf. So I just, what I do is I just flick it up and out and go thin, nice and pointy at the top. 
And on the other side, up and out, and then keep it thin again. So it goes from wide to thin, and you got that jagged, a little bit of a rough jagged edge for the leaf. And I'm not trying too hard because you can barely see it, which is the point. Getting us ready for when we do our actual dark leaves. So this can help for placement if you want to start placing your leaves where you, you know where you want it to be and you like to place it better without too much of a risk. Again, on the side, I have a leaf coming in on the side over here. I'm just going to flick it out. You can see like half of it coming out. You can always add more later around your leaves. Okay, so I'm going to wash this off. I'm going to wait again one more minute for that to dry, which is a good idea. Wave it around. We'll start our dark green. And then we will definitely want it to be fully dry before we put the white for our petals. And um, yeah, that would be a good idea. So you're not getting green all over the place. I'm just going to wave around for a minute. So hopefully it's pretty easy and fun so far the way you're, you're finding this is easy to work with, no stress, very forgiving. Okay, let's see. Yep, seems pretty good. Okay. Let's start with some dark green. So with dark green, we're not going to really add too much white. We're just going to start with some dark, really dark green. Almost got a little hint of black in there. Same brush. Let's use the same brush. Let's take some equal parts of blue and yellow. You can add a touch of white. You can take like a little kind of just a little dip of white. And I'm going to also take a touch of black. Let's take a little extra yellow because sometimes it goes a little bit too teal. And if you don't like it too teal, you know, just add a bit more yellow. And it just balances it out. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this off. Keep it nice and thin. So you're just flattening your brush if you're using the thin side. We're using this green here. And just to start, we're just going to use the thin side to start doing little lines here, kind of soft bends. I'm going to use a touch of water. Something like this. And see, we have, let's just, for example, use this leaf. Um, you can switch to a detailed brush, but so you can just kind of go around. See how I'm just lightly 
flicking it out, going upwards. And then see, nice and pointy on the end. And on the other side. So if I take a little bit of white on my brush with this and I just lightly fill that in. Maybe a little bit more yellow, seems still pretty blue. Lightly fill that in. So again up here, let's just sort of forcing you to use a flat brush. We can take this again. A little touch of water. Just go around it, put a little line through the middle. I like to add a little bit of white on my brush. So that was a dark one, I just add a little bit of white. You can just get a little bit more color in here. Back to the dark. You're just mostly accenting with the dark color, more in the middle, and just a little bit more black, get it nice and dark. More in the middle and on some of the edges. A bit more of that sharper look. So a little bit more of this water and paint, water and paint. Maybe just like a crossover. We have some more bends coming this way. Not so much of them just sitting straight up, right? Because it's kind of in the wild. It doesn't really do that. It's all mixed together. You can go a little bit lighter sometimes. They don't all have to be super dark. And we have this leaf down here, just go around some of the edges. And then we have one a little, just a little bit up here, so down the middle, and just kind of go and flick it up and out. Keep it nice and more pointy on the end of it. And also, they're not perfect. They're not all perfectly the same size, shape, or anything like that. Wherever you think you need to put a few of these leaves, you can always add more at the end too. So if you feel like you need to add a little bit more, you can do that. You don't need to overdo it right away. But leaves coming in from the side, good idea to make it look like it's being engulfed and by leaves and there's life beyond the canvas. Okay. So down at the bottom, I like to fill a lot of this in. Different dark greens. So this green and some of that white we added over here. As you can see, there's a little bit of a lighter green. And I always had a little bit of just a touch of black added in so it was softer in color. And I just make up my leaves as I go. Get pointed and then just little flicks and then coming out here. And sometimes just at the bottom, I just fill it in, meaning I just add lots and lots of grass and little blobs and dabs to make it look like there's a cluster of some greenery different types of leaves at the bottom. Usually there's lots of leaves at the bottom collected, lots of stems.
And you can just add a leaf coming out here. You just do more of a softer bend of a leaf. Just kind of press and just keep it a little bit of a tail on the end. So it looks like it's kind of just blowing and bending in the wind just a smidge. And you can take a little bit more of your darker with black green and just kind of shadow the bottom. And just near the top, we have a little bit of a daisy up here that's got a stem attached to it. You can just add later, you can just add a leaf or you can just put it in now. I'm going to go a little bit lighter green. Just offset it so when you put a leaf on the other side, if you want to put a leaf, just make sure that it's not. You can offset it so it looks like it's not perfect, perfectly balanced, or asymmetrical throughout. Okay. So very shortly, I'm just going to add another leaf down here. See, there's another. There's a bunch of some of leaves. attached to a stem. Lots of leaves filled at the bottom and we'll add some more at the end once we're done our flowers. You can work around them too. It's actually not too bad. I'm not going to overdo it at the moment just in case when I put the flowers I feel like Maybe I just need maybe one or two more. Maybe I'm good. So I do want the green to dry for the most part. So you can let yours dry. Go get a blow dryer. I know mine won't take too long, so I'm just going to wave it around just for another minute or so. And I'll start placing some of our flowers. Okay, so take a little stretch for just a minute, or you can skip ahead. Okay, let's see. Seems good enough. Let's try it. So first, I'm just going to take 
You can use your round brush or you can use a flat brush. Either one's fine. Let's just use a round brush for fun. I'm not gonna really, you can dip in the water, but you don't have to right away. I'm gonna take a nice scoop of my white. Nice little blob of that. So for the white, um, one of the first things you probably want to start with is just placing maybe more of a focus flower and working around it. Because if you start off with some smaller ones and you try to put a, more of the bigger one, the emphasis, it might get a little too crowded. So in the middle, basically it's the middle, I'm just going to do a nice circle because that's where I want the center to be. And sometimes you have to wash off your brush if you accidentally pick up some white. And just trying to get it to refocus here. Okay. More white. When you're doing your petals, the, the key is to not make them too symmetrical and perfect, actually. You'll notice that sometimes they're a little bit longer here and there, or there's one behind it in between. They're not just perfectly spaced out because they don't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flick it out like that. I'm going to flick it and just press. So you want the end to be kind of thicker too. So are kind of the same width and thickness all the way through in a sense. Maybe you can even start outside in. So really close. And they're really really close together. So sometimes they go right behind. So I'm going to just do this and it's like it's going behind another petal. Just like that. We're going to use some gray later to give it a bit more definition, not black, but it's going to have black, but not full black, just like more of a gray color. And second coats are perfect. You want so do a first coat, let it dry, and then do a second coat. Okay, just make sure it's nice and rounded and ovally shaped at the ends of the petals. Just go put that out, see a little bit longer sometimes. You just have to trust the process. A little bit shorter one, get long again. We have maybe one sitting behind, the in between. You can just go behind and put another one in between. There. Okay, it doesn't look like much now. I'm just going to let that sit. However, remember our orange that we made. Go back to your golden yellowy color. So mostly yellow, a little bit of white, touch of red. Look like your background color. We're just going to start with a little bit of a center here. But we're not going to make it fully just yet. And you have an idea of how it's going to look for later. We're going to add more and complete the center after we finish with the petals to make it a lot easier too. Okay, just washing that off. Okay, let's add some more flowers. Now, let's see. So going outwards, just filling up space. I'm not gonna, you don't need to overlap, so we can just go along the side here, just put another little center, little circle, and then you can just make it look like, because you see it in different angles, so sometimes when you're looking at, say, this one, you see it more on one side than on the other, and the trick really is to give it a soft bend, but also shorter petals on 
one side. So you just kind of do a little flick, press. And then on the other side, you just can go a tiny bit longer. Soft little bend. See, it's curled back a bit. And on the top, you just kind of curl it back a little bit. And you can just go around making it a little bit more oval shaped, less pointed at the ends because they tend to be more consistent with the thickness all around. So we have a flower kind of sticking in from the top. Just do that sort of bottom of the circle you can see. And then just make your petals kind of hanging down, soft bend. There. And if it makes it easier, just make the centers more orange at first, but you have to be careful. Um, it White will pick up any color as we know. So maybe that's not your preference. I'm just gonna make one circle here and leave a gap, put another just up here. Dry this off, take white. Yeah, just some long ones hanging down, some shorter ones sometimes. And this one, it looks like it's kind of more like a comb flower shape where it's like you only see the top of it and you only see it kind of hanging down. The petals hanging down here, so just soft bend hanging down. Maybe a couple little petals off to the side from a flower that you don't really see much of. Okay, I want to extend some of these. Just extending, or if you have time to do a second coat. drawing this off. So some more flowers. I'm just doing the one right below. So the, the center would be somewhere around here. And just a couple petals. Again, more like a cone flower. You only see more of the top and you just see what's hanging down. So soft bend around that. Uh, looks like you know, a little birdie when you play badminton, the kind of cone shape going on. Right. So let's add another couple of petals coming in on the side here. Then we have more of an open face one. A couple more open faces just around where the big one is, but not quite as big. So the little center and, you know, some of them can be a bit more straggly. They don't have as many petals per se. And just soft little bend sometimes is really what helps give it more of that body and natural look. Let's just make another circle for the orange one down here. 
So I'll just start putting them a little bit into these flowers. I have another one here and more of a cone shape here sticking out. And I have another one next to this one, pretty close, but not too close. You just have, you still have space for a little bit of petals, but some of it overlaps. Okay, white. We're going to start with the one behind it, and then we're going to put this one over top. So you can just, you don't really need to do too much detail for this one on the side that's going to be overlapped by the other one. Just work around. And another good idea is to, sometimes it's nice to just around the circles, just fill it with white, even though we're going to add creases of gray later on. So you don't have too many gaps because you want to make it look like the petals are really squished together in the center. Okay, so around this, these are always like really close together, kind of touching and separated more by gray details and dark gray. I'm just going right over top of this flower. Okay, so sometimes you can appreciate the way and the angles that you are making your flowers are not all completely open faced, meaning it looks like some of them are turned one way more than the other, depending on, you know, how long it is on one side. And they all have these soft little curves and bends that I was saying over and over again. Okay, wash this off, take a bit more white. Get in there. Okay. Oh, again, this one, it's a bit more open faced. All filled in with white at the center, but then they kind of spread out. And I'm just going kind of working around, going a little bit behind this one, try not to overlap it because I want that one to be more in front of this one. Okay, then one of my last ones do have a petal over here. Really easy. Just do a couple facing down. And this one's overlapping. All right. Okay, so I think I will get the blow dryer to make it a lot easier. I'm gonna get that, blow dry it. Um, yeah, I'll be back in a minute and just let this dry because you have to let it dry too. So we'll get started again. You can also skip ahead 
with your head and you want to get started on the next step. Okay, so that's more dry, and you can see it probably needs a skin coat for some white, but we're going to do that soon. And just a reminder, yes, this tutorial was um, released ahead of schedule. And you can watch it, of course, anytime you want to. Hopefully it's more convenient, so you can just do it ahead of time or even later. So one of the things that we're going to start with first is getting in some of our gray, our dark gray and our lighter gray to start giving some more detail in the petals. And then we do a second coat of white, or you can even do a third. And then we're going to finish up at the centers of it. And you can add more leaves in between because it looks like we need a couple more leaves to fill in some of the gaps here. We'll do that after. So with our super small detailed brush, this is about a size zero. You can use anything you want to if you have a bigger canvas. You can use something bigger. Touch of water. But all we need to do is just take some black and some white. So I'm going to start off with a darker gray because it's easier to see. A little bit of water, some black and white. So it's more of a medium to dark gray. You only need a touch of black if you want it light gray. 
I'm just twirling my brush in here to get the extra paint off. So I just kind of twirl it, twirl it around, keep it nice and pointy on the end. Twirl, twirl, twirl. So water and paint, you just have to keep doing that. And if you look very closely, which is good when you're doing with lots of paint, you can still see some of the edges with the white paint where it starts and ends, but I'm going to kind of wrap around. I'm just going to go around, give it more of a crease around the bottoms and in the centers of the petal. It's almost like you're making little outlines, but also not towards the very end, more in towards the middle. I'm just kind of going little V shapes or U shapes to give it those extra creases. Sometimes you just follow that up. Just like you can see more of the outline of the bottom of the petal and see which one's in front of which. So for example, maybe I'll want this one and this one to be in front of the one behind it. As I do little creases, just going down the middle of the petals. So when I take my light gray, so that's just more white. So this is a much lighter gray, a little bit of water. And I'm just going to just dilute a little bit. Just go around. Add a little bit extra, but you see, it's just, it's not as harsh here anymore. And you can take a little bit more dark gray just to get some spots a little bit more accented than others. Okay. So now we have to do a second coat of white. This will help because it's got a lot of gray right now. Use the brush that you've been using before. Take some white and just pull that in. I like to start Outside, pull it in. And it just softens the gray even further. Okay, and then just go into some of the gray. Just pull it in a little bit more. Just pull it in towards the center and you see subtle hints of that gray, not too much definition. It just looks a bit more creased in there. When in doubt, you just kind of cover more of the gray if it looks a little too much. So what helps with the daisy is now in the center, it's very flat right now. So with a small brush, like a number two, or you can use a number six or four round, just a bit more, you know, pointy. After you've done that, take some yellow, touch of red, and let's take one more touch of red, give it more of a deeper orange, okay? 
more of a deeper orange. Then you can see more on the, just the very right side. I'm just gonna go and dab, dab, dab really close to the dark gray. So it's kind of slightly overlapping. So you're just gonna blob it in. So it's very, it's not too much of a perfect circle. It's like more spongy and kind of rough on the outsides. Very blotchy and spongy. So you do that about halfway, or this is about three fourths of the way. Wash this off. Then you're going to take just yellow and white. So white, a little bit of yellow. So very light yellow. See, it's like a lemon kind of yellow. Then on the opposite side, start over here. I'm just going to introduce that towards the other side, nice and blotchy. And it looks very 3D. So you, there's small things you can do to go above and beyond, which I find super helpful. So this is just like you take a detailed brush and you can take your, your dark gray, right? You can just take your dark gray again. And you can just, just around, add little lines just kind of around this. So some of those, like the shapes of the petals just around, not on every single one of them. Those little bottom V shapes, you know how it looks like you can see the bottom of the petal just attaching to that middle part. Just do the shape around the bottom of it. It looks like it's attaching to the center of that flower. Just a little bit more of that darkness, just kind of shaped around a little, you can even just do little dots around here with some of that dark gray. And now you have what's more of a 3D looking flower. You can even just go back and do more outlining afterwards to give it more definition. Just light little lines outlining some of the base of those petals and more, not really going to the end, you're just leaving the ends more just white. And the center gets a little bit more of that gray to dark gray right at the very center. So we're just going to rinse and repeat for all of them, in a sense. <laughs> we're going to do similar things. So if it helps, if once you do this, you can want to do more of your open face ones, do the same thing, pops it out quite a bit. And then we'll start doing more of the, the, cone, the cone shape where it's you only see the top here, and then you only see the bottom of the petals. You don't really see the other side. It's not open face like the rest. Back to my brush. Uh, let's go back to our detailed brush. Do the same thing with the dark gray and the light gray. Uh, let's start with, let's just do this one. Okay, we're just going to follow some of these petals just a little bit. So it's more of a U or V shape attaching. And if you add more white, so a very light gray, you can just get more of a lighter gray where it starts from going out, soft that, soften that dark, dark gray so it doesn't look too thick. Just take some playing around. And since this one is a lot smaller, we don't need to overdo it as long as it's got some more darkness increases in the middle. Welcome guys, saying hi to Vicky. See lots of familiar names who've painted along before. And if you're using a smaller, if you're painting a smaller uh, flower, just use a smaller brush. 
So again, second coat, pull from out in, which is pure white. And also when you use a lot of paint, it makes it look like it has a lot more texture, right? That's a good thing. Also, something that maybe you've noticed or something fun, if you're not doing all just daisies, you want to do some more of like pansies, you can do it with different colors, right? You can have white more on the outside and you can just do more purples and pinks, blues on the inner side. Okay. So the same thing we've done before, we're going to take our dark, darker orange, right? So remember we took that darker orange over here. And then just lightly tap more on one side. And then take your light yellow, go on the other side. It's okay if it touches a bit of the gray, it's actually probably a good thing. There. So if you have it brown or you want to add a little bit of brown, you can take equal parts of yellow and red and a dot of black or maybe two dots of black. Give it just a little bit more of a brown look. Just kind of wipe off the extra paint. You can just very lightly after the fact, just dab in some extra darkness on the darker orange side. If you feel like going again more above and beyond little extra detail. All right, and then last thing, you can just go back to your, oops, small brush. And just touch up on the creases around. There we go. one up here. It might even be sometimes a good idea. So if you have something like this sitting at the top, you can just kind of lightly paint around, circle around it, do a couple little light to darker streaks, outlining a little bit at the beginning of your petals. Being something when it's, you know, you don't need to spend too much time on all of them, especially if they're just half in, half out. You don't need it to be super detailed. Second coat with the white though, and just a little bit of that gray is key. You can see I'm using a lot of white paint and it just makes it look more opaque and it stands out a lot more. And so that's just white coming in. So I'm just going to take some more of my dark gray, little kind of V shapes to give it that nice little crease where it attaches right to the center and then some of that orange, dark orange. You don't really see the light in the dark here. I just did dark, there you go. So if you have little petals just sticking out on the side, you can just do a second coat, maybe like a little streak down the middle, just a little light gray streak down the middles here, or once in a while, some little outlines on some of the petals, nothing crazy. Okay. 
and then your white. Okay, so hopefully it's coming along nicely. It's working. Take a step back, look at your painting. That I recommend. See if you need to do a little bit more outlining or you need to do a bit more darkness in between your petals. If you find that it's lacking something or lacking dimension, you can go a little bit more heavy handed. Okay, back to my dark gray. Uh, let's do the ones down down here so since this one's behind this one I want to start with this one doing the same stuff as we did before nothing's not doing anything different so dark gray do the little creases, may as well, I'll do two at once, how about that? Determine which petals are in front of which, if you have some overlap. Take light, light gray, so mostly white with a touch of black. And just put a little bit in with this. Right, so it just softens it, dilutes all of that really dark gray that you've been using. Same with here, but not going outside on the ends of the petals. It's more in towards the middle, coming from the middle going outwards. White paint, second coat out, drag it in. And a generous amount is, I think, a good idea. Darker orange. And then a light yellow after you wash off your brush. Let it go into the orange, pick up some of that orange, let it mix a little bit. And then you can tweak and fine tune things. Me, it's mostly just shaping around this inner circle that we've just made, giving it a little bit more of that definition increases. You just dot around it, really brings it out. Or follow some of the outlines on some of your petals for extra definition between the petals. Little dots and dabs around that center here. Okay. 
And then feel free to add any brown as usual into the darker orange side. Let's, let's do this one, and then we're going to come back and do this one, overlapping this one a little bit, and this one slightly overlapping that one. So we'll do this one, and you can do this one at the same time. Actually, we'll save these ones for later as well. Moving on to light gray. After I did some dark gray. More covering a lot of this dark gray, pulling it into the middle. So it has that depth when you have when you put the white, you have a little bit of that lighter gray towards the center. Okay, and then we're going to take our white. Nice, generous amount, pull it in. Thanks, Diana. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's um, with these little details, it really brings it together. Once you did the white there, let's go back to our darker orange. You just blotch it in nice and close to the gray, kind of overlapping it a bit. And then you wash it off and take your light yellow. Start on the opposite side. And just lightly tap it in. Let it mix with that orange. Yes, of course, there's, there's um, the same link as the replay. Watch it anytime. Okay, so a little fine tuning with some darker gray again. I like to just, as usual, dab a little bit around here. Just get it nice and creased and much darker 
as we, before it goes out into the petals. And I wash this off. Add any little bits of brown in with your orange. Just around here gives it extra darkness. And I use a lot of paint for this. I like texture. I think it brings it nicely together. Any little tweaks you want to do with some white, you can just go over top of your gray. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Okay, so back to this one. Rinse and repeat. It feels like it's a lot of repetition. Probably you can even just mute me because I, I just like to keep saying it over and over again just in case people like to hear it from me so that they know that they're doing it right or they're doing it the way that I've been doing it. So this one's overlapping this one and we're going to take our dark gray. Give it some outlines as usual. Soft little ones at the creases. And some down the middles of the petals, not just the edges. Take your super light gray, put some right into the words center, cover up some of that dark gray that we just did. Take your white from the outside in. Right over top of the other flower. Going back to my orange. There's a dark orange, wash this off. Light yellow, opposite side, let it go in and mix into the orange.
Okay, and we're going to fine tune and tweak. The inside, so the dark gray again, or some light gray, some a little bit of both. But for me, just fine tune some of the petals and kind of dotting around the edges here. And when in doubt, you can just take white and cover any dark gray that you're not a big fan of, that you think is a little bit too harsh. I'm going to focus on these ones here. So it's it's pretty much the same, you know, just kind of make sure you're following the groove, how it's flowing downwards. Maybe some separation between the petals and just kind of wrap it around. You're just kind of going around, making almost like a cone shape on the bottom, but not wrapping it around all the way around the top. And you can still do a little bit of that, remember that light gray that we just put right where the top is before the, the center is like just around the creases, just to soften that dark gray. Put your second coat of white, pulling from the outsides in. And the same thing we've been doing before. We're just going to do some darker, but slightly, I mean, you can change it up. Um, you can do it the same or slightly different. The bottom can be darker this time. So the bottom down here, just put your dark orange down here. Then you wash that off. Take your light yellow and just do the tops and bring it down, right? Because it's more, the light's more hitting I guess on the top of it, whereas it's darker at the bottom. Okay, let's do this one, overlapping this one. Dark gray. I'm just gonna add in a little couple of dabs of my dark gray again here. Okay. Light, light gray. And then take your darker orange, just at the bottom. And the light yellow, and we're sitting at the top. Let it pick up and go into your darker orange. Now, if you want a little bit more of a separation, you can just make sure that 
you know the difference between your flower and the next flower. You can put a little bit more of a, I think a light gray is fine for some of the petals sitting behind the flower. And also you can be just a bit more orange in general on this top part. Okay, so we have those ones at the bottom, great. And then we're almost there. We just have to do a couple more over here. So let's start with this one. And this one's kind of overlapping this one. Just, just kind of wrap it around. Just a little bit, you can do a little bit more of a shape here so you know where that is. Do your dark and light gray. Doing my second coat of white, generous amount, as I've been saying, because it's very helpful from the outside, pulling it in. And I'm taking my dark orange again with my round brush. I'm going to darken the bottom. Or darken in the bottom. And then lighter at the top. Put some yellow and some white. I'm going to do my last little tweakings. A little bit of dark gray kind of wrapped around, dotted around the bottom. Just a little extra detail shaping around the petals coming out from it. And I finish up with this one, overlapping slightly on this one if it happens to be. If it's not, then it's okay. Just little shapes around, some little dots. You can get ahead and just shape around and do dots around the center.
and with some super light gray, if you, this is a little idea, if you want to just do little, high, not highlights, just some soft light gray outlining to look like this is overlapping another one, but don't go too thick. It's mostly a very thin line and it's a very light gray, optional. Maybe just some extra light gray just to get that shadow more creased into the center, but also not too dark. Okay, I'm taking my white, doing my second coat on my petals, a nice thick layer. orange center go on more of the right side wash it off bright yellow coming in from the other side lightly mixing with the darker orange Feel free to add some brown over that darker brown, equal parts yellow and red with a bit of black. You can just dab some of that in wherever you see fit, mostly in the darker area. And from here, it's mostly just adding in more leaves. But I want to just a light little tweak with some of the dark gray. So if I use my detailed brush, I'm going to use my number two. We can add in some fillers with the leaves and the greenery. And it doesn't all have to be the dark ones. Remember that lime green we had from the beginning? It can just be some of that too. And you can even add in some lime green into the middles of these leaves that you've already made. Just, and you can just use this first to map out where you think you want to add extra stuff. And if you don't want it there, it's just a light green. Nobody's paying attention to that. I feel like there's, there should be more here. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more there. Um, then I'm going to go back to my dark green. Yellow and so I would say two parts yellow, one part blue, touch of black, basically no white. There we go. Bit of water. And now we can really shape around. We can go back to shaping your some of your leaves here. Get some of the stems a bit darker. Maybe attach stems to certain flowers. So like your daisies, making it look like there are some stems attached or just adding some leaves in the background behind. So if you just work around some of your petals, you just paint around them a little bit, just a little bit loosely. Looks like you have leaves behind it going in the background. So maybe right here, just a little leaf. As you can tell, I'm not also putting too much effort into it. Um, I'm not, I don't care if it overlaps a little bit. I 
<laughs> it's funny, this one. This flower looks really happy because it looks like it has arms. <laughs> Sometimes it's like you don't need consistent lines. You can have just like really wispy ones and it looks like it's faded in the background. That's another fun style. And some extra darkness and some leaves, some stems coming from the bottom, sometimes overlapping flowers, which is a good thing. Okay, so that, remember that lime green? If you have a lot going on and you still want a little bit of green but not too much darkness, just go back to your lime green and add a touch of this dark green. Okay, it's just more of like a muddied, lighter green still. And you can just add some in, some lines next to your darker ones. And it adds more depth and dimension because you have now some dark and lighter leafy colors. Uh, one thing I do like to add, just with a flat medium brush, is some, some greens. Uh, you can play around with your greens. You can use the same greens. You've been using some of your darker greens and some lighter greens. You can just make, you know, like a, a leaf kind of go over top of a flower because it would naturally do that. It's probably a good idea if it dries before you do this. I'm kind of, I'm okay with it. I'm kind of comfortable. Just add some green in between here. I'm just kind of filling in some between at the bottom, but for the most part, I just left the top not too filled, but there. Something like that, I think, is good enough. Or if you need more contrast, just add some more black. And you should be good. So there's our daisies. And I hope this was fun, relaxing, not too complicated at all. Take that step back, look at and admire what you've created. Yeah, this is just some dark gray or you can use brown to really shadow and add some extra depth. 
at the end. And sign your painting. I'm just adding some little details into the middle of the leaves, different colors. We have the light color and then some darkness on the edges or the bottoms. Thanks for painting along with me. Maybe you'll paint along with me again sometime soon. Need a stem for the top, Daisy. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. See, look at that. Stem for the top, Daisy. Here it comes. So I'm going to use a light kind of lime green. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna have it attached to an existing one. Why make a new one when you have one that's already existing? Add a little bit of more there. See, now we have a stem for the top daisy. So a little bit of water, and you can use some black. You can hide your signature in a flower or just in the mix, right? So you can just put it somewhere in the chaos. <laughs> Probably, since I'm left-handed, just put it right here on the left side, little initials, not too intrusive. Okay, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to show your results. This one was fun. This one is very nice. It's a good piece to, you know, just display really anywhere in the house. Bye, guys. Check out our website, artspalettederm.com, for more events and on our web on our YouTube. If you just click on our YouTube, lots of painting tutorials we've already taught that you can watch and replay too.